So you're driving a small van and you're thinking about going electric. So this video might be of interest to you. You are a Toyota brand loyalist and you're changing from your diesel uh, Pro Ace City to maybe potentially something electric. This is the video for you, keep watching. We're going to go through all the specs, the features, inside and outside, and then take it for a drive. Uh, Toyota Ireland have given me this car for a couple of days, this van for a couple of days. They're not subtle about the fact that it's electric. I drove it into the office and one of my colleagues said to me, is that diesel? And they were being ironic. So it is wrapped. First of all, all the vans won't look like this. Let's start at the front and then move down along the side. As always, you have a very similar Toyota Pro Ace City. So there's the Pro Ace, which is the regular size, and then the City, which is the smaller one. Um, and then they have the electric um, designation if they are electric. This is a partnership that they have with the Stellantis Group. So this van is very similar to the Citroen e Berlingo, the Opel or the Vauxhall Combo E, and then the Peugeot E partner so badging is a bit different but otherwise it's pretty much the exact same there is no storage in underneath this is this is where the actual um, engine would go on the combustion engine version you have your halogen headlights you have your depending on the trim and the two trim levels and two lengths in Ireland we're calling them GL and GX you have some air intake here some air intake here on the GX model you'll have fog lights 16 inch rims You've got your little dinky Stellantis indicator that I always like to talk about. Wing mirrors, I find a small bit small. Doesn't have blind spot. They are retractable on the upper level trim, but I have the entry level trim here. Uh, nice little quarter panel mirror in the uh, A pillar. Good big size doors in fairness, and they do open up well. It's a one-sided uh, sliding door. On this model, on the long wheelbase, it is a larger model, uh, double-sided doors. This would be where the fuel cap would have gone, or the fuel wet fuel would have gone in the, the diesel, but now we have an 11 kilowatt on AC, and then on DC up to 100 kilowatt, with a 50 kilowatt hour battery, usable about 45. Uh, WLTP, they're saying 273 when I got in, it was about 220, so like all electric vehicles, depending on the ambient temperature, etc. It is a, probably the most utilitarian van that I've ever had because of very little bells and whistles. Uh, I'll go through the difference in the trim levels once we're in the inside, but let's spin around so you can see what the back is like. As I said, this is the regular length and then there is a longer length. But let's have a spin around. On the top of the doors, you have your high level brake light. It's a separate locking system from the cargo area to the cab area. So you have to make sure that that's unlocked. 60-40 door split. And again, very similar to the Stellantis, you've got these luminous yellow handles. You're locking it at 90 degrees or you can unlock it and leave it open at 180 degrees. They don't lock at that, very similar to the Berlingo or the Combo or the uh, Partner. Inside then you've got up to 4.4 meters cubed uh, and then if you have the Verso Park and we'll talk, look, have a look at that so you can drop that flap down behind the passenger seat and put stuff through or turn up the passenger seat so fairly versatile. You've got some tie off points, you've got light, you've got the single sliding door on this one as we talked about and there is a double sliding door option. But overall very similar to what we're used to already. This one has the flooring kitted out on it. Good access very used to very very much what we're used to no difference to this and the combustion engine van let's have a look at that packing system over on the left hand side that gives you an extra 1.5 meters cubed of that space in the sliding door you have the option then for this extra space so you just drop that down here and then you can see that the seat is there so what you need to do is come around to this side and you've got a little uh, blue up here pull that up and then the whole seat falls down and then you've got that full run all the way through if you had something a bit longer to take you can see there and then the back of the seat the back of the chair has been uh, has steel on it now that flap that closed down you can take that away you don't have to leave that there on the floor because it's not attached it's just hinged at the bottom and then to put it back in just make sure you get the clips on and then up there we go and then up and then lock that down you can see for left hand drive markets they have the actual attachment so that's option number one on the seats just pulling that blue there we go and then option number two is if you've got something tall that you want to put in the front you just pull this lever up and we need to take out the toyota warning triangle and that locks in place there so you have extra space there really handy and really practical 
what's it like inside the Toyota Proyce City Electric. There is a Proyce City Verso as well and a Proyce Verso and the Verso is the Toyota way of saying that there's passenger version of it so I don't know whether they're going to be bringing the electric Verso passenger very similar to the e-Berlingo uh, and the Opel and the Vauxhall Combo e passenger version so let's see everything is pretty much identical inside here except for the badge and the steering wheel the steering wheel itself actually is a different shape so on the door you've got your side mirror adjustments you've got your windows up and down passenger and driver and then you have your rear cargo area unlock but otherwise there's not much else on that door you've got some uh, storage up here for a small coffee cup holder and some of the other vans that i've had from the same platform uh, there's been a kind of a storage area up on top of the actual steering wheel it's not here uh, the binnacle is actually analog again very similar to the rest of them You've got your speed on the left and the right. You've got your power, whether you're going eco, power or charge. And then you have what you're doing with regards to the HVAC system, how much energy you're using, whether you're doing eco or max to keep the cabin hot. Uh, there are no heated seats, etc. inside this. You do have heated wing mirrors uh, and then your battery gauge, zero to 100%. You have a range on the bottom as well. And then you can use the stalks behind it. No buttons on this steering wheel. On the GX, yes, it is a multifunction, but not on the GL, the entry level. You've got your indicators and lights on the left, and on the right, you've got your wipers. You've got your cruise control on the left on a separate stalk, and then you've got your audio um, volume up and down again on a separate stalk. So, yeah, it's, as I said, it's very utilitarian, and very even more so when you come across to the infotainment system. It is a grayscale gray, gray screen, no Android Auto, no Apple CarPlay. It has literally radio, media, and radio is your regular radio. Media is you plug in a USB-A, your telephone, the drive itself, uh, lighting, comfort, safety, diagnostics, and then settings. Now the screen is responsive, but there's not a lot going on there. You've got a large volume button and an on off. Um, Underneath that, then you've got your central lock and hazard lights. You've got your HVAC system, which is doesn't have climate control. And in this version, this trim, so you've got your on the left, you've got your uh, blower speed. On the right, you've got your temperature. Uh, electronic handbrake, you have that coming out from the dash like we have on all the other Stellantis models. You've got the Stellantis switch gear, your drive modes, which are power, normal, and eco. You've got your mode selector, reverse neutral drive, two stage regenerative braking, which is the B mode, so that would be for urban areas and for descents. Bit of storage in underneath, you've got a bit a transmission tunnel because this is a multi-fuel multi-power platform you've got my favorite little random 12 volt button down there and then you also have blue tab time in the middle section you have the ability to slide forward the uh, tray desk whatever you want to call it and then not it says not when you're driving bring it back and then pop it back up again the middle passenger would want to have very short legs just with that uh, bit coming out from the ins or the where the the gear selector is. You've got a top glove box, and you've got a little shelf, and you've got a, a section underneath which would, would have been the normal glove box, but it's open up because the fuse box is on that side. Overhead storage, steel bulkhead, this one is solid. I have seen them in other reviews where it's been a, a mesh or a cage. Um, overall, it's not bad. As, because this is the entry level one, we're not getting any bells and whistles, so no blind spot, no reversing cameras, no parking sensors, um, and you just get used to them after a while. But listen, if it's on a budget, this, the, the entry level one might be for you. It's a perfectly good radio, and you can charge your mobile device on the USB Type A. It's about a 7 watt. I'll stick the picture up on the screen. Yeah. We'll take it out for a spin, but overall, not bad. I've got the other specs here of it. Let me hold on. i get me phone out. So what have we got going on here? As I mentioned, we have the two trim levels, two body size, the uh, short wheel base and the long wheel base. We talked about the battery, the range, the load volume, the payload, it can take up to 700 kgs in the back on the short wheel base or the long wheel base, and it can tow up to 750 kgs as well. Maximum speed is 135 kilometers an hour. We talked about the three driving modes um, and the increase with the Smart cargo seat it brings 1.3 load. So the L1 is 3.8, the L2 is 4.4, and then uh, you get a extra 1.3 with that uh, cargo, smart cargo. So the GL in Ireland, uh, you get the same cluster. So what don't you get? You don't get the switches on the steering wheel, you don't get the front fog lights. Uh, it's an eight inch touch screen with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, rain sensors, and electric folding mirrors. So they're the difference in the two trims. Uh, domestic 
charging socket you can get up to 11 kilowatts but on a regular 7 kilowatt home charger probably take about 8 hours and then up to 100 kilowatt on a DC fast charger you can get from uh, 10 to 80 percent in about 30 minutes. Overall and there is an app um, so my T by Toyota battery and charging and cabin heating and cooling so you can precondition uh, it has a three-year 100,000 kilometers vehicle warranty and an eight-year 160,000 battery warranty and they also provide their branded um, home chargers as well. But let's take it out for a spin. Uh, I've been driving it for a couple of days now, it's been really nice. Nice smooth going, but we talk about it, we stick up a couple of cameras. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so. There are, is a full playlist of over 20 electric vans, from the small stuff all the way up to the large stuff. Uh, if you're interested in that fleet transition, uh, there's a playlist there. Huge thanks to my Patreon supporters. New Patreon, Heinrich Leisner, Adrian Carey, Blake Boland from EV Life Ireland, Eve Daly and Mark. Lots of ways to support the channel. There's links in the description. But just comment, like, and share. That'd be great. Driving the Toyota Pro Ace City Electric very smooth. It's well weighted. The uh, steering wheel is a nice shape, a nice feel to it. Good visibility frontward anyway. Uh, when you take off, it automatically locks the doors and the cargo area. But as I said, you have an ability to you have the ability to unlock the cargo area as well and, and keep that keep that uh, cab area locked. Uh, rear visibility, because it's got those small wing mirrors, now I have seen, and again, on some other reviews across the European market, that there is a camera uh, op option available. I'm not sure if that's coming to the Irish market. Um, but good storage up top. You've got your rear view. You've got your, uh, not rear view, your vanity mirror, mirrors with lights. The dials are nice and clean and crisp. That infotainment screen is, as I said, a small bit on the minimalist side, but it gets the job done. Yeah, it's not bad. So it comes down to, and I don't have prices, unfortunately, I was not able to get the price of this before I filmed. Um, so I'll stick it in the comments. So it really is down to which brand you prefer. Have you got other brand uh, vans within that brand that you like to go to the, your particular dealer for servicing, etc., etc.? You might have a, a lease agreement. You might have a, a finance agreement with Toyota Ireland as a, as, a, as a whole package. So it may suit you that you want to start reducing your emissions in a commercial capacity. And this might be the perfect fit for you. Let me know in the comments if this is something that you're interested in. The smaller vans, I've done a lot of vans recently on the channel and just building up that playlist. It's not always about the cars. I think practicality and stuff like this is important to understand what's in the marketplace. I got contacted on social media during the week by somebody that's looking for a small electric van. What's available, what's out there. So the pickup is good on eco and sport mode, uh, eco and comfort mode, but then when you stick it into sport mode, up oh, it's for sport or power boat, not sport mode. Oh yeah, straight away you get to feel it there. Brakes are solid, they're not too grippy. And with that B mode around town, you get that bit of regeneration coming back in and you can see that on the right hand dial with regards to whether you're charging into the battery with regen going downhill or start stop driving. Otherwise, there's not much more to say about the Toyota Pro Ace City Electric. As I said, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. If you're interested in electric vans, there's a playlist there for you. I'll stick it up on the screen. Um, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Like the video. Share it if you know of somebody that drives a van. Range-wise, you're talking, as I said, 273 WLTP is what Toyota is claiming. Real world near the 200 mark. And then when you start going on motorways and start putting load in the back, uh, you're starting to chip away at that, uh, that range. But yeah, listen, if it suits, if you know your routes, you're not going, you're not going to do too many drive too much driving um, along roads that you don't know where you're going to go if you're getting jobs. Um, if it's a defined route, if it's a delivery list logistics company, whatever that may be, this might be the perfect fan for you. Hopefully you've enjoyed the review. Remember, if you think an EV is for you, leave it to me and I'll review. Thank you very much for watching.